All right, you're good to go. Hey, okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, let me wait for a minute to see if everyone's ready. Okay, so probably I can start. Uh, hi, everyone. So uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about multi-touch uh, algorithmic attribution. And I'm Sai. Uh, I work uh, as a data science manager at Adobe. And I primarily work on uh, attribution. So let me go uh, through an overview on what uh, attribution is. And then uh, I would go through uh, what's the different ways of solving this attribution problem. Uh, and then how to evaluate whether uh, uh, your models are doing better and whether they can be deployed in the production. And finally, the conclusions. So, uh, so as you know, uh, the online advertising has grown exponentially over the last few years. And over 45% of the US total media spending has been digital. Most of the offline spend is moving uh, into digital. And with these comes uh, many challenges. Uh, for example, the marketers for many companies uh, want to measure the effectiveness of their media channels, such as email, uh, or display, or paid search, or maybe direct, uh, etc. So they want to find out uh, which of these marketing touch points are important for their conversion. The reason they want to do that is the marketers uh, want to see uh, where they should invest their marketing budgets for better uh, ROI. For, for example, they can allocate more budget into paid search if they see that paid search is giving relatively more ROI than display or email channels. And hence, it becomes very important for them to give the correct credit attribution for each marketing channel towards their respective goals, which could be probably the conversions or the page visits or checkouts or anything that they care about. So, uh, in the, in the industry so far, there have been various attribution models, um, some due to the lack of data and some due to the lack of uh, methodology and some due to simplicity. For example, the most famous have been the rule-based models where uh, you simply look at the first or last touch uh, and then provide uh, the contribution to these touch points and then assume that they are actually responsible for the conversion. But that is something not true because uh, there might be some other touch points in between the first and last touch, which are actually contributing to the conversion. So uh, usually marketers would prefer this for simplicity, but this won't give an accurate, accurate picture of the reality. And similarly, the equal weight touch point model is another heuristic, but uh, uh, it, it doesn't necessitate that that's the actual reality because there might be some touch points at some key points in the journey which are actually contributing towards the conversion. And similarly, uh, time decay touch point model where uh, more contribution is given to the touch points closer to the conversion is another uh, rule-based model. But again, uh, de determining the decay factor is something which is not easy and it's dependent on the prior beliefs, et cetera, which is not a data-driven uh, attribution model. So uh, the industry has come up with some algorithmic-based models which will help, uh, which are more data-driven and help, will help the marketer to make more uh, reasonable uh, conclusions based on the data. And some of them are the logistic regression or the survival model and Marco models. Uh, so, uh, so all of them are well covered in the white papers in the industry. Uh, so let me explain what this uh, presentation is about. 
Uh, in the past few uh, years, uh, we have seen tremendous progress in the field of deep learning and it being used in different applications. So this presentation is about how uh, deep learning can be used uh, even for the problems such as marketing problems such as attribution. Uh, so uh, before uh, going into the concept of attention, let me say uh, the deep learning uh, is where you look at uh, a series of large time series data and then uh, either make predictions based uh, on the historical uh, behavior or uh, maybe you can, uh, you will try to uh, predict whether uh, a particular user behavior is as expected or not. And uh, deep learning has shown uh, very great results in both image and text analysis and recently being used in other wide uh, domains such as finance, healthcare, et cetera. And there's no reason why we can't leverage it in marketing either. So uh, let me explain what the attention is. So attention uh, is a mechanism where uh, in, uh, in deep learning frameworks where they pinpoint uh, whether a particular uh, uh, time point in the user journey is uh, interesting in the customer journey or not. So uh, maybe it will be much more clear when we go deeper into the slides. So in, in layman's language, it helps us understand how uh, this helps us uh, in capturing the customer's attention. For example, if a customer is going through uh, email, page search, and display before going to a uh, uh, conversion, then we will know uh, which touch point is contributing the most to the conversion. And what's the conversion effect because of this touch point? And this is when uh, uh, we can leverage the attention mechanism in deep neural networks to achieve this. Uh, so let me explain a basic framework for the deep learning neural network for multi-touch attribution here. Uh, for reference, this is uh, a published paper in at KDD. So definitely go check out uh, to see the architecture as well as how uh, it, uh, how the data uh, transforms from the input to the output. So. Here, as you see, the first layer uh, is an embedding layer where we uh, transform the series of inputs into uh, uh, for input into the uh, hidden layer. And then it's an LSTM. The second layer is a RNN LSTM where it takes the input from the embedding layers. And then uh, on top of LSTM, we have an attention layer, which is helpful uh, to figure out uh, which of these uh, inputs are helpful uh, for the conversion or in this case, or for any prediction output. And finally, V is just a normalization layer and P is finally the prediction output. Further, uh, we can extend this DN, uh, deep learning neural network with multi-touch attribution with to time decay, where we introduce the concept of decay, which is lambda here, by uh, changing the attention uh, layer formula as follows. That is, we uh, introduce the lambda so that uh, we can tweak the earlier model to uh, have the concept of time decay in it. And finally, we introduce a DNA MTA with fusion. The reason we want this to introduce this is because uh, sometimes the marketer wants to uh, find, uh, see or measure the beh behavior of control variables or demographic variables such as um, age or income or region or any other uh, profile related variables that affect the attribution model. So. Uh, we extend the earlier time decay model uh, with another uh, neural network and then combine both of them to have the final atten uh, attention layer. And then we have uh, uh, a final prediction. 
let's go through the pros and cons of uh, the models which are existing in the industry versus the DNA MTA. As you see here, uh, there's uh, many differences between the rest of the models with the DNA MTA. The first one being uh, in the rule-based models or even the other algorithmic models, most of the time the interaction effect between the touch point observations is not captured. In relation to that, in uh, DNA MTA, we captured the interaction effect or the sequential dependence through the LSTM and also the attention. And in the other models, we usually have the negative weights, but, uh, the, but in DNA MTA, we can make sure that the attention scores are always positive. And uh, with the other models, when the customer path is usually long and there are a large number of interested touch points, they are not usually scalable. For example, either the matrix, matrix size becomes too large for uh, resolving it. But in DNA MTA, we can um, adopt it for variable path length and make it memory efficient input. And at the end, for many models, the model interpretation is very difficult. But attention mechanism in DNA MTA gives us the ability to for a very good interpretation for attribution. Let me go through the model evaluation so that uh, we can figure out how to evaluate any model and why DNA MTA is better. And in future, if you uh, put this in your production, how you can evaluate this compared to your existing models. So one, uh, even though uh, AUC is not a, a great predictor of the validity of the model for attribution, However, since we have established attribution as a super, supervised prediction problem, this will certainly help if, uh, if the marketing touch points are being uh, able to correctly predict the conversion or not. And a high AUC definitely guarantees that at least the marketing touch points are doing a great job of explaining the conversion. So as you see here in this curve, uh, we see uh, the LR as in logistic regression and the la uh, LTA as in last such attribution are, uh, are, not, uh, are not doing as great as uh, deep learning models. So there's definitely uh, a increased uh, our AUC and uh, through ROC curves, which will help us uh, understanding or explain the prediction uh, conversion prediction with uh, marketing touch points further we want to say that this is perfectly scalable this is the ex uh, experiments that we have run on we have used like 21 touch points and this data set size is post sampled but they, we can uh, run this even for uh, much more larger data and we can see that this has 2.6 million rows. And the accuracy is, uh, the, uh, as you see, the accuracy and AUC is larger for uh, the D DNA MTA models. And even better, uh, we expect the fusion model to have the uh, higher AUC and higher accuracy because of more features in it and the ability to explain uh, the conversion in a better way. And further, let's see how we can uh, interpret this attribution for each conversion once we are done with the model. For any model, or in fact, for once we build an attribution uh, for any model, we can build a heat map and then see how's the contribution for each of these touch points. For example, in this slide, we see that the PS means paid search and the DI uh, is related to direct and similarly ES related to uh, email, et cetera. So each of these touch points uh, are at a lag of zero, one, three, eight, nine, et cetera, days from the conversion. 
So as you see, the, uh, the darker the color is, the more contribution for this touch point towards the conversion. And we see that uh, DNA MTA fusion uh, gives a lot more uh, contribution for the touch points towards the conversion. And this is something marketers can relate to because this, uh, this is something uh, which they observe in reality as well, where touch points closer to the conversion have higher contribution to the uh, uh, marketing. And further, we can also uh, uh, plot the distribution density by exposure. So in this graph, we, uh, point, uh, we plot the exposure for different uh, touch points uh, and different lags. For example, in, the, in these four plots, the first plot uh, shows the attribution value for the lag between zero to seven and uh, the next between seven to 30 and the 30 to 56. And this is for the overall cumulative. As you see, each touch point has a different behavior in each of these plots. That's because some of the touch points are much more effective when they are closer to the conversion, but some of the touch points such as uh, display might be more effective when they are farther from the conversion. And this helps the marketer to not only invest uh, uh, into their marketing channels uh, during, during their budgeting spends, but also to evaluate the effectiveness of their marketing channels by not just looking at the uh, last touch point or the last few days, but the entire customer journey. And this is one more example where we show uh, uh, what's uh, on the y-axis, what's the conversion probability for this user, and the, each of these uh, plots rep uh, or the bars represent uh, the attribution score given to this touch point. In the attention mechanism, we make sure that the sum of these attribution scores sums up to one because we want to um, measure the relative contribution of each touch point towards the conversion. And when we normalize it to one, it gives us uh, a uniform measure to compare across all the uh, conversion paths. In this case, we see that the uh, email touch point, which is close to the conversion uh, at a lag of probably zero, has a very high conversion probability attribution score compared to the other touch points. And one more way uh, we can interpret the uh, attribution through attention uh, for different touch points is to plot the attrib mean attribution value. For example, let's say we have a million uh, conversions. And so we have a million, million conversion paths. And for each of these conversion paths, uh, look at all the touch points uh, re resulting in the conversion. So for each of these paths, uh, take all the touch points and sum up and uh, aggregate their scores and plot it as here. So uh, as you see, each of these uh, touch points have very different behavior with the time lag. For example, the display click shows that uh, most of the display click is effective uh, at the very at the very beginning and after at the lag of phi, uh, it almost becomes negligible. Similarly, uh, email click uh, also has, and paid search also has very less uh, contribution over the time. This means that most of these are much more effective during very close to the conversion or at the big, uh, or uh, within the lag of less than phi. In contrast to that, some of the impression touch points, such as display impression or email open and email sent, have a lag defect where even uh, emails which are sent like seven days or ten days or thirty days have uh, a, a a positive effect on the conversion. 
So, if, uh, so the conclusion from this is that uh, we shouldn't make, uh, we should always look at the lag uh, lag effect of some of these touch points and not just the first or last or the equal weightings to figure out if some of the touch points are indeed contributing to the conversion or not. In conclusion, uh, I would like to say that uh, LSTM helps us capture the interaction effect or sequential de dependence compared to the logistic model the reason for say, saying that is uh, LSTM or uh, the long short term memory models in neural networks uh, ha have been uh, pioneered in the last few years for all, all kinds of uh, sequential models, like in uh, especially in NLP and time series. And uh, we uh, and on top of that, the attention has helped a lot in providing the interpretation to the uh, to these models. So uh, for this particular use case, uh, LSTM has captured uh, help us capture the interaction effect uh, because of uh, because of the way it works compared to simply using the logistic model or where you uh, generate the features and uh, ignore the interaction uh, between the touch points. And similarly, uh, uh, the uh, attention mechanism does the great job in providing uh, the interpretation. For example, if there are three touch points, then the attention mechanism provides uh, a value of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2 to each of these touch points. And this, these values provide the relative importance of these uh, touch points towards the conversion. And finally, uh, we say that the fusion deep model has provided a great flexibility in introducing control variable and accounting for their contribution. So a combination of uh, LSTM attention models and using the fusion model has helped us uh, to capture uh, the interaction effects, the control variables, and the, uh, uh, other uh, time lag effects in our models. And um, we uh, can say that these models uh, are better than the other simple rule-based models or the logistic-based models. Uh, let me see if there are, uh, how much time I have, yeah. So if, uh, if there are any questions, I can take them or else, uh, let me see how much time. Okay, then I think, uh, uh, thanks everyone.